We are joined now, and I want to get straight to him, one of the top oil and gas deal makers in the world. Tom Petrie is vice chairman at Bank America, Merrill Lynch. He has been an active advisor to more than $140 billion worth of energy-related mergers and acquisitions, an E&P guru. Great to have you here on set, Tom. Good to be here, Matt. Let me ask you, you know, I, I remember when this well first exploded, I called you up right away, and you said, this is bad, and it's much worse than the Exxon Valdez. Uh, what do you think about it in hindsight? I mean, did they take care of it relatively quickly as far as your expectations? They did. They did, considering the magnitude of the problem. It, it, as it turned out, in terms of the amount of uh, oil on the water, it was quite a bit worse. But uh, BP went to extraordinary steps uh, to deal with it as well as they could. Uh, there was a much more difficult cleanup proposition uh, and containment uh, problem. Uh, but uh, to get it done and to have it uh, really permanently dealt with now is a great accomplishment. Is it, though, permanently dealt with? I mean, the well is dead, clearly, but there could be repercussions as far as uh, the shore life, the sea life in the area. I mean, do we they don't, still we, have some ways to go? Well, we, we definitely don't know all of those implications without question. There's a lot of studies that will be done to monitor this over the next years and, and probably decades. Uh, there's also a, a set of policy knock-on implications. Uh, we've got a moratorium that was put in place, struck down by the courts. Uh, then a modification of that uh, is in place. And de facto, uh, there's been a knock-on effect on both shallow water drilling as well as deep water drilling. Uh, the, the implications of that for a worsening of our uh, energy supply demand picture uh, in 2011, 12, and beyond uh, are, are serious. So hopefully uh, we'll see some redressing of that in the context of the success in containing the problem. Hey, Tom, it's Adam out here in the newsroom. Uh, just last week, we were told by Conoco that they're going to shift some of their CapEx budget, in other words, their drilling budget, into the center of uh, the country going for those shale plays because they're not sure what's going to happen out in the Gulf Coast because of the moratorium. So are we going to see more of that, do you think? I do. Uh, I very definitely think that that type of a shift was going to happen anyway because these shale plays have come on and have very compelling economics. Uh, but uh, this is going to accelerate that process. Does this bring us closer to uh, real peak oil? I mean, I'm, I'm fortunate mm -hmm. to see Charlie Maxwell a lot on the weekends. He yep. continues to contend that peak oil is just around the corner as far as production. Uh, but you have kind of a different, more well, politically involved take on peak well, oil. Well, Charlie's a good friend, and uh, I call it practical peak oil. But yes, it's coming on, and the reality of it is becoming even clearer by virtue of this. You know, if, if uh, the de facto moratorium that we're dealing with continues, uh, we lose uh, probably 150,000 barrels a day of production over the next 12 months. Over the next five years, uh, we lose a multiple of that. And uh, that's something that's going to be uh, uh, a very difficult thing to deal with in the context of a global peak that probably shows up sometime between 2012 and 2015. What does this mean for an industry that was in the middle of consolidation? Does that continue because it scale makes it easier to do the things they need to do to get it out of the ground? A lot of consolidation uh, that's occurred is logical. I think consolidation uh, may have run the bulk of its course. I'm not saying there won't be some more. What I now see going on is a lot of asset rationalization. Uh, the, the migration of certain assets from one owner to another who's better equipped to deal with its uh, later life properties, if you will. So it's more the rationalization of ownership than true consolidation. Mega mergers. Uh, some statements have been made in the last year that those are largely behind us, and I think that's probably true. But reallocation of relationships between international oil companies and national oil companies, between independent companies and uh, others in the food chain is going on. Hey, Tom, you know, talk about reallocation of resources. BP still, in theory, another $20 billion worth of asset sales. Alaska talked about as the jewel in the crown. Where do you think that stands? Any idea what might happen with the Prudhoe Bay properties? I uh, don't know uh, about the specifics of that. It is a, uh, it's a major property and, and it has those attributes of a property that's been producing for 30 plus years. Um, there's still a lot of oil in place, so whoever uh, ends up owning it is one who's going to go after that remaining oil in place, in my view. What do you think about uh, the, the, the life of BP now that it's come through this, done with the well? Obviously, we've, we've talked about what we don't know, what's in the water, what happens on the shore. But as far as dealing with this and sort of moving on, uh, 
how long is it going to take? Well, the company's already taken big steps. There's a new CEO uh, stepping in here in a few days, um, and they've already made progress, as you've mentioned, in this in terms of asset divestitures. They, they, they'll do some more divestitures, and I would say it's a it's a several year process, but they they've got a roadmap to do it now. And they can continue to grow. I mean, Bob Dudley is an uh, oil exploration and production guy. He is. He is, and he's and he's got a high threshold of pain. Witness uh, what he went through in dealing with uh, Russia. All right, uh, that that is a very interesting story. It would take a whole other segment to talk about that. Tom, thanks so much for coming on and joining us. Tom Petrie, uh, Vice Chairman, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch.